The first light of dawn stretched across the planet's desolate expanse, illuminating the crumpled remains of an alien starfighter. Its once pristine hull was now marred by the violence of its descent, etching a deep scar into the earth. Aboard the vessel, a lone figure stirred amidst the chaos of shattered panels and flickering lights. The pilot, Lyra, a member of a species known for their grace and fearsome technology, was pinned in her seat, wounds painting a stark contrast against her blue skin. The crew had fled, deeming her unsalvageable. Left to the Void's mercy, she was a commander stripped of her command, her life bleeding out in the wreckage. Her craft, designed for stealth and agility, was a jewel of the cosmos. But now it lay dormant, its systems failing, its mission forgotten. Each warning chime was a countdown to the end. Lyra's eyes, reflecting a sky she might never see again, closed in defeat. The planet, indifferent to her plight, was silent, but for the whisper of sand against metal. This silence was broken by the approach of Jack, a human prospector whose existence was as solitary as the landscape he traversed. The crash site was an anomaly in his routine search for resources, a break in the monotony of survival. Clad in a suit weathered by countless storms, Jack weighed the risks. The alien before him was a prize, one that could bring wealth or war. His hand hovered over the blaster at his side, instincts honed by years of solitude urging him to be wary. Their eyes met, human and alien, across the divide of species and circumstance. In that gaze, Jack found his resolve. With careful movements, he extracted her from the mangled cockpit, her body limp in his arms. His medkit was crude but functional, enough to seal wounds and stem the flow of alien blood. As he worked, Jack's mind raced with questions. Who was she? Why here? His life had always been simple, straightforward, until now. With each passing second, he became more entwined with the fate of this alien being, her survival inexplicably linked to his actions. It was a connection he hadn't anticipated, one that could change everything. Jack's footsteps were methodical as he trudged back to his shelter, a makeshift structure cobbled together from the remains of forgotten expeditions. Inside, the alien, Lyra, lay still on a crude cot, her breathing steady thanks to the improvised care. His shelter was a haven of scavenged comforts, a testament to his life on the margins, where the galaxy's discarded debris became his treasures. Jack had always prided himself on being unencumbered by the complexities of interstellar politics, living off the grid on this barren planet. But now, with Lyra's presence, his sanctuary felt smaller, charged with the weight of responsibility. He kept a wary distance, watching her chest rise and fall, wondering if she would awaken as friend or foe. In the silence, he went about his daily routines with an added vigilance, the presence of the alien forcing him to confront his long-avoided need for companionship. Yet he couldn't ignore the thrill of curiosity that sparked within him, the allure of the unknown that Lyra embodied. Lyra's condition stabilized over the coming days. Jack observed her with a mixture of fascination and caution. He'd repaired a translator from his stash of gadgets, hoping it would bridge the gap between their worlds when she awoke. Meanwhile, he scoured the starfighter's remnants, salvaging what could be useful and hiding what could be dangerous. When Lyra finally opened her eyes, confusion and fear were evident in her gaze. The translator sputtered to life, and Jack introduced himself with a hesitant voice. Language formed the first frail thread between them, words weaving a fragile alliance in the vast tapestry of the cosmos. They shared necessities like water and food, alien to each other, yet sustaining all the same. Jack's rations were foreign to Lyra's palate, but survival trumped taste. As they broke bread, a bond began to form, tempered by necessity and shaped by the understanding that, on this lonely planet, they were each other's only hope. Jack found himself talking to her, narrating tales of the stars, of the solitude that was his life's constant companion. And as Lyra listened, a sense of unity took root, a unity born of shared silence and the unspoken acknowledgement of their intertwined fate. As the relentless suns of the planet marched across the sky, marking the passage of time, Lyra regained her strength. With the translator serving as their mediator, Jack and Lyra embarked on the precarious dance of building trust. Their conversations were stilted at first, full of long pauses and careful disclosures. Jack learned of Lyra's people, the Alari, a civilization that prided itself on harmony and advancement, but had been thrust into conflict with an unknown aggressor. Lyra, in turn, was introduced to humanity's tumultuous history, a patchwork of triumphs and missteps, war and peace. 
Jack spoke little of his own past, the details emerging in fragments like pieces of a puzzle Lyra was yet to complete. He had once been part of something greater, a cog in the war machine of humanity, but had chosen isolation as his refuge. Together, they ventured into the wilderness to salvage parts from the downed starfighter. The work was slow and deliberate, with Jack teaching Lyra the art of human resourcefulness. They crafted tools from the wreckage, repurposing alien technology for their immediate needs. Each day brought new challenges, but also a growing sense of camaraderie. They were two stranded souls, one human, one alien, each the other's anchor in the storm of uncertainty. Their skills complemented one another, Jack's ingenuity paired with Lyra's advanced knowledge. Yet, their alliance was not without its tests. An attempt to access the Starfighter's core systems resulted in a power surge, leaving them in darkness as night fell. It was a stark reminder of their vulnerability, a misstep that could have cost them everything. But under the canopy of stars, they found solace in shared stories. Lyra recounted her days as a commander, the weight of decisions made in the heat of battle. Jack revealed more of his reasons for solitude, his disenchantment with a universe at war. As they sat by the fire, the division between them began to blur. They were no longer just a human and an alien, they were survivors, united by a common goal. They needed to signal for help, to escape the planet that had become their prison. Together, they began to devise a plan, pooling their collective knowledge for a chance at rescue. The fire crackled between them, a beacon in the night, symbolizing the fragile warmth of their growing alliance in the cold expanse of space. In the relative safety of Jack's shelter, as the twin moons cast their glow through the thin atmosphere, Lyra's mind wandered to the memories she had fought to suppress. The stillness of the alien night provided the backdrop for confessions and recollections. Lyra spoke of her homeworld, a planet of vast oceans and archipelagos, where harmony had reigned before the war. She had been a revered figure there, her strategic prowess unmatched. Until a single lapse in judgment had led to a devastating loss, her fall from grace as swift as it was public. Jack listened, his expression a mix of empathy and contemplation. He understood the burden of command all too well, the heavy mantle of leadership he had once shouldered. His own history was marked by the echoes of war, a relentless drum that had pushed him to the edge of known space. He shared tales of his last battle, a harrowing standoff on a frontier world where he had lost more than he had won. Through the sharing of their histories, they began to unravel the threads of their identities, finding common ground in their experiences. Jack's journey had been a long retreat from the chaos of conflict, seeking solace in the silence of the void. Lyra's path, though cast in a different starlight, was also one of isolation, a fall from revered commander to a wounded outcast. They spoke of the battles they had fought, the comrades they had lost, and the haunting feeling of what-ifs. It was a conversation that bridged the divide of species, drawing them closer in the shared landscape of loss and regret. Jack realized that their chance meeting was perhaps not just luck, but a confluence of paths that had been winding toward each other all along. In the shelter, surrounded by the hum of salvaged technology and the whisper of alien winds, they forged a bond deeper than necessity. It was a connection born of the profound realization that they were not so different. In their reflections, they found a mutual respect that transcended the vast distances they had each traveled, alone, until now. This night, filled with the ghosts of their pasts, marked a turning point. It was no longer about mere survival or escape. It was about understanding that sometimes, healing could be found in the presence of another, and strength could be drawn from the very wounds that had once seemed insurmountable. Lyra's recovery had been a quiet revolution, her vitality returning with each cycle of the moons. But tranquility is often the lull before the storm. The serenity of their refuge was shattered by the arrival of a new threat a sleek, predatory drone that slipped through the atmosphere with silent precision. Its design was unmistakably Elari, a sentinel sent to ensure that Lyra's failure remained absolute and final. Jack's instincts, honed by years of survival, snapped into focus as he spotted the drone surveilling the area. With a hushed urgency, he warned Lyra. The reality of her people's relentless pursuit chilled her to the core. She had hoped her absence would be overlooked, lost amidst the chaos of war but her people did not leave loose ends. They had little time. Jack and Lyra scrambled to enact a plan, repurposing the makeshift defenses they had built from the starfighter's wreckage. Their efforts were a blend of human cunning and alien technology, 
a mesh of tripwires, energy nets, and camouflaged traps laid with the hope of ensnaring their hunter. The drone, equipped with an arsenal designed to neutralize a single rogue element, advanced with lethal intent. It was a dance of predator and prey, each move countered with desperate ingenuity. Lyra, no stranger to tactical warfare, anticipated its strategies, while Jack's guerrilla warfare experience turned the terrain to their advantage. The confrontation was swift and fierce. The drone, a masterwork of Elari engineering, was relentless, its systems adapting to each obstacle. Yet it was no match for the desperate resolve of its quarry. With a combination of a rigged energy trap and a well-aimed shot from Jack's blaster, they brought it down. The silence that followed was deafening. The drone, now a heap of smoldering metal, was a grim reminder of the lengths to which Lyra's people would go to maintain their secrets. It was clear they could not remain hidden forever. Their presence on the desolate planet was now known, and it was only a matter of time before more would come. The aftermath of the battle brought a new resolve. If they were to survive, they would need to be more than survivors. They would need to become warriors in their own right. Their alliance, born of chance, was now tempered in battle. They prepared for what was to come, knowing that each day was a gift and every night could be their last. The hunter had become the hunted, but they would stand together, unwavering. With the wreckage of the drone smoldering in the distance, Jack and Lyra knew they had to move. The quiet rhythm of their existence was broken. They had become a beacon for all the wrong reasons. Jack plotted a course to the nearest human outpost, a place as rough around the edges as the planet it was anchored to. It was a frontier colony, the kind where questions were left unasked, but even there, an Alari would draw attention. The outpost, a tangle of metal and ambition, was a hub for the kind of folks who thrived in the gray areas of galactic law. It was a place of second chances for some, last chances for others. Jack had contacts here, and he hoped to find a discreet way off-planet. But Lyra's presence complicated things. The air was thick with the scent of oil and sweat, the sounds of industry a constant drone. They kept to the shadows, avoiding the busier thoroughfares. Lyra, cloaked in nondescript garments, could pass for human at a glance but any scrutiny would reveal her alien nature. They made their way to an old associate of Jack's, a grizzled pilot named Cora, known for not asking too many questions. Cora ran a supply route between the outer colonies, and she owed Jack a favor. They found her at a dockside tavern, the kind of place where deals were made over a glass of the local firewater. Jack's arrival with an Ilari in tow raised eyebrows, but Cora's curiosity was tempered by the promise of payment. The colony was a microcosm of the galaxy, a melting pot of species and stories, but old prejudices ran deep. The Alari had a reputation, and it wasn't a favorable one. Whispers followed Lyra like shadows, and Jack could feel the unease settling in around them. They had to work quickly. Lyra was an enigma, a talking point, a cause for suspicion. The whispers turned to murmurs, the murmurs to calls for action. The colony had its own history with the Alari, a memory of conflict and loss and the arrival of one in their midst was a spark in a tinderbox of resentment. Yet, amidst the rising tension, there were those who saw Lyra not as an Elari, but as an individual. A group of human and alien settlers, weary of old hatreds, offered tentative friendship. In hushed tones, they shared their stories of integration, of the struggle to find common ground. In them, Lyra found an unexpected kinship, a reminder that not all were defined by their past. But the relative peace was short-lived. A faction within the colony, spurred on by fear and memories of war, demanded Lyra's departure. Or worse. Jack and Cora, understanding the stakes, hastened their preparations. They had to leave before the situation escalated. As the twin suns set, casting long shadows over the outpost, Jack and Lyra boarded Cora's ship. The engines rumbled to life, a sound that was both an ending and a beginning. They left the colony behind, a place of both refuge and rejection. A stark reminder that the galaxy was a patchwork of beliefs, and harmony was a delicate, elusive dance. As Korra's ship cut through the cosmos, the relative safety of space allowed Jack and Lyra a momentary breath of relief. But the war, like a shadow, was never far behind. News reached them through intercepted transmissions. The conflict had escalated, with the frontier colonies becoming unwilling participants in a larger battle. Their next destination, a strategic outpost known for its neutrality, was now under threat. Jack knew this outpost well. It was a place where many cultures intersected, a hub of trade and diplomacy. 
Its strategic importance made it a prime target for conquest. If the outpost fell, it would shift the balance of power in the region, allowing enemy forces a foothold in neutral territories. Understanding the stakes, Jack and Lyra agreed that they could not simply pass through. They needed to lend their aid. Arriving at the outpost, they found a community bracing for conflict. The air was thick with tension, the skies periodically lit by the distant glow of skirmishes. Jack's experience in logistics and guerrilla tactics made him a valuable asset, and he quickly took on a role in organizing the outpost's defenses. Lyra, with her advanced tactical knowledge, began to train a volunteer militia, imparting techniques that were foreign yet fascinating to the human fighters. Their days were consumed with preparations. They fortified structures, established surveillance networks, and prepared escape routes. Jack and Lyra worked side by side, their bond strengthening with each passing day as they fought for a cause greater than their survival. They became symbols of unity, a human and an alien standing together against the chaos of war. The inevitable attack came at dawn. A coalition of enemy ships descended upon the outpost, their cannons blazing. The battle was fierce, with Jock and Lyra at the heart of the defense. They directed fire, coordinated troop movements, and repelled borders. Amidst the chaos, Lyra's strategies turned the tide, exploiting weaknesses she knew all too well from her command days. The outpost's defenders rallied, inspired by Jack's courage and Lyra's resolve. Together, they managed to hold the line, repelling the attackers with a mix of technology and sheer determination. As the enemy retreated, the outpost breathed a collective sigh of relief, the crisis averted for the moment. In the aftermath, Jack and Lyra were hailed as heroes. The outpost, grateful for their intervention, offered them sanctuary and support. They had become more than survivors. They were protectors, their alliance a beacon to those who believed that unity could prevail in the face of division. As they looked out at the stars, the weight of their choices pressing upon them, Jack and Lyra understood that their journey was far from over. The war continued to rage, and they would be called upon again. But for now, they had each other, and a cause worth fighting for. Their next steps were unclear, but their purpose was undeniable, to stand together wherever the tide of war might lead them. In the quiet aftermath of their victorious defense, Jack and Lyra understood that their impact could extend beyond the outpost's borders. The enemy's retreat provided a crucial opportunity to strike at the heart of the conflict. Lyra proposed a daring plan, to infiltrate the enemy's main command ship. Her intimate knowledge of her own people's military protocols was their ace in the hole. Their plan was audacious. They would disguise themselves as members of the enemy fleet, using captured uniforms and a salvaged enemy fighter. The aim was to either negotiate a ceasefire from within, or, failing that, to sabotage the fleet's ability to wage war against the neutral zones. Jock and Lyra spent days preparing, studying the enemy's communications for patterns and weaknesses. Their forged identities had to be flawless. Cora, ever the reliable ally, helped them secure the necessary equipment and documentation. Their departure was a somber affair, with the outpost's inhabitants expressing their gratitude and concern in equal measure. Navigating through space, Jack piloted the stolen craft with Lyra guiding him through the encryption protocols to avoid detection. Their approach was tense, every passing moment ratcheting up the strain of what lay ahead. As they docked with the enemy command ship, the reality of their mission set in. They were in the lion's den, surrounded by those who would kill them without hesitation if their true identities were revealed. Moving through the corridors, they played their parts, blending in with the ship's routine while making their way to the central command. Once inside, they found themselves face to face with the fleet's commander, a figure from Lyra's past who recognized her despite her disguise. The confrontation was immediate and intense. Accusations and justifications flew the history between Lyra and her former comrade adding layers of personal betrayal to the encounter. Lyra's plea for peace was passionate, citing the destruction and loss on both sides. She argued for coexistence, for an end to the bloodshed that benefited none but those who wielded war as power. Jack supported her, his own experiences lending weight to her words. The debate was heated, with the commander torn between duty and the undeniable truth in Lyra's words. As tensions reached their peak, an alert sounded. Another faction had launched an attack on the command ship, seizing on its moment of vulnerability. In the chaos, Jack and Lyra's sabotage came to light, but so did their plea for peace. With the ship disabled and facing external threats, the commander made a decision. Ceasefire terms were hastily negotiated, 
an agreement forged in the fire of conflict, influenced by Lyra's convictions and Jack's resolve. As they left the command ship, the fleet broadcasting the ceasefire, Jack and Lyra knew that their mission had changed the course of the war. They had faced the heart of the enemy and found there not just adversaries, but also the possibility of change. Their return to the outpost was triumphant, their success a testament to the power of courage and the promise of reconciliation. The return to the outpost was marked by a mixture of jubilation and disbelief. Jack and Lyra, once mere survivors of circumstance, were now architects of a tentative peace. The outpost, a beacon amid the strife, welcomed them not just as heroes, but as harbingers of a new era. Their daring mission had halted the advance of war, giving rise to hope where there had been only resignation. As the news of the ceasefire spread, the outpost transformed. It became a gathering point for diplomats and emissaries from various factions, eager to negotiate a more lasting peace. Jack and Lyra were central to these discussions, their first-hand experiences and newfound respect influencing proceedings that sought to reshape the galaxy's political landscape. Lyra, once a disgraced commander, found redemption in her role as a peacemaker. Her unique perspective, bridging both human and Alari worlds, allowed her to mediate discussions with empathy and insight. Jack, ever her steadfast ally, worked alongside her, his background in logistics and strategy proving invaluable as they planned the reconstruction of war-torn regions. Together, they navigated the complexities of diplomacy, their relationship deepening into something profound. They were partners, bound by shared experiences and a vision for the future. In the quiet moments between negotiations, they planned a life beyond the war, imagining a world where their unity could be an example to all. The treaty signing was held at the outpost under the twin sons that had witnessed their struggle. It was a symbolic choice, representing not just the light of hope, but the duality of their journey, war and peace, human and alien, despair and hope. The document they crafted was a mosaic of their collective will, a framework for coexistence and mutual respect. As the leaders of various factions placed their signatures on the treaty, the crowd that had gathered cheered. It was a sound that carried across the barren lands, echoing off the metal structures of the outpost. Jack and Lyra stood side by side, their hands intertwined, watching as their efforts bore fruit in real time. The war had ended, not with a final battle, but with words of compromise and promises of rebuilding. The peace was fragile, its future uncertain, but the foundation was strong, built on the courage and determination of those who dared to change the course of history. As the celebration continued around them, Jack and Lyra looked out at the horizon, where the stars were beginning to twinkle in the evening sky. They knew challenges lay ahead, but for the first time in a long while, they faced them together, united not just by circumstance, but by choice. Their journey had begun, with Lyra wounded and abandoned, and Jack a solitary figure in the vastness of space. Now they stood at the forefront of a new chapter, not just for themselves, but for the galaxy at large. It was a new dawn, bright with the promise of peace and the enduring power of unity.